All right, now here we go. I'm gonna do a part two. YouTube, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Hip Living on YouTube, or a series of my Facebook um, pages. You may be seeing this on Facebook. Um, I'm Stuart Spears, and I'm, I guess you could call me a health enthusiast, fitness instructor, fitness consultant. But what I'm getting into right now, and this is like a part two, I like to call this part two of my rant. Um, in this crisis situation we is in this health crisis that we're in right now with this COVID-19 and um in the emotion and what I said in an earlier video I was talking about and sure as I said it there were going to be merchants of people's fears and emotions so you got a whole lot of conspiracy theories out there about what's going on right now and what's unfolding and I'm not the person to write off conspiracy theories, don't get me wrong. But as I said before, sometimes our emotions can get the best of us to the point where we're really not thinking. The fear just overwhelms us. And when we're not thinking straight, we're not really making the best decisions. And particularly in this case, when we talk about our health and our wellness. Now, this video is a special one. Obviously, I'm a black person, African-American. Um, whichever you choose to call, but no doubt person of color if you want to call it that. But I'm among a group of people, let's just be real and be honest about it. When you talk about being disproportionately affected by much of anything, not just in America, but this whole planet, it's the people of color, it's the brown people, it's the black people, it's the brown people, it's the black people. Now, the conspiracy theories that were out there about black people being targeted, we know the history of black people being targeted in this country with a whole lot of things, especially when it comes to infectious diseases, experimentation. I'm right here in Richmond, Virginia, something controversial that came out just recently. Some of us have been knowing this for a while about a university experimentation on African Americans. And it's probably happened at John Hopkins and a lot of universities. So that is not anything new up under the sun. It's sad, it's pathetic, it's, it's the state that we live in right now. But where I want to go with this, and what I really want to zero in on, is what are we going to really do about it, black America? What are we going to do about it, black people? Because the one thing I will tell you in everything that I just mentioned a second ago about what this government, businesses, and you name it, has imposed on black people, particularly when it comes to our health and the way we're being treated, is we had to really step up our game, public policy-wise, organization-wise, coalition-wise, co-op-wise, whatever we needed to do the generation that come before us, we really needed to really step up and make way out of no way. Um, that's where we are right now. A lot of the stuff that, that I've been hearing about, again, disproportionately how we've been affected by this COVID-19. The irony in this is, is the cynicism, which does remind me of when HIV AIDS was out. Um, maybe, I guess it's maybe 30, 40 years ago or so right now. And um, this was a gay white male disease. Lo and behold, it went from that to affecting disproportionately black people. And it wasn't just gay people, it was heterosexual people. Then it was intravenous drug users and so forth. And so, again, even with the conspiracy theories out there that I don't completely write off, because I don't put anything past governments and so forth, there were things that black folks had to do. And the one thing that always stood out with me is when it came to health and wellness. And I'm talking about health and wellness from a black perspective. I'm going back to people like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm thinking about people like, for example, Dick Gregory and a lot of other brothers and sisters. And most recently, we talk about Dr. Sebi. Um, and so we know what to do. Black America, we know what to do. Black people, we know what we have to do. We know what we have to do. We're not lacking of knowledge and information. What we lack really is what America lacks to tell the truth. So it's just, just not black people, but because I'm talking to black people, I'm specifically focusing on us because we, we really got to focus on us right now a lot. Because um, it's obviously when you talk about the government, when you talk about the healthcare system, when you talk about us going to the doctors, obviously we get neglected. There's so many stories out there about black women in particular. They go to the doctor, they're going through something, they're in pain, 
Um, the doctors are treating them differently. Everything's going to be okay. And it's probably even happened with COVID-19, if you really think about it. But, but what I'm getting into this right now, with the knowledge and the information that we do have, we have got to do what we got to do and zero in on this. I'm passionate about health and wellness. And unapologetically, yes, I'm all about everybody. But unapologetically, I do focus on black people a whole lot. Because I know the experience. I know what we go through. I know from my family members and, and how, for example, you know, how these statistics come out with, with uh, chronic illnesses such as heart disease and cancer and so forth. And there have been family members of mine that have succumbed to that. And so I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision to take that knowledge and do the research and do whatever I needed to do. I'm 57 years old. Um, I've had my share of just, you know, or illness here and there. But one thing I've never really had to really worry about or be pressed about is a chronic illness because I took the information and I applied it from a black perspective, the people that I just mentioned earlier. And I'm always getting more and more and more information and, and getting that information and applying it. That's my point when I say, what are we going to do about it? We have got to have the will. We have got to really have the determination and the discipline to apply what we already know. Um, there are things that you can do right now. I have this philosophy called do what's in front of you that applies to working out and exercise. I also can apply that to health and wellness when it comes to us making decisions. Just do what's in front of you. You got a backyard, you don't have to have a green thumb. You could use a five gallon bucket or you could use a, I've seen people, particularly your brother, um, I can't remember his name, I wish I could give him a shout out, but um, he does this whole thing. He, he's a postal worker, he works his nine to five. But he's, for the last 10 years, I've basically been passionate about gardening, getting out there gardening and, and, and planting the seeds and everything. And just like me and a lot of other people, in his family has a history when it comes to high blood pressure and chronic illnesses and so forth. But he and his wife have made a decisive decision to empower themselves and start with themselves when it comes to their health and their wellness. You cannot trust the system, okay? Y'all, we can't trust the system. We get the conspiracy. We know what's up. You can't trust the conspiracy. You got to get right in there and not waste time going back and forth arguing with people. You know, my conspiracy is more important than your conspiracy. Or my. See, that's ridiculous. We can't get caught up in all of that. You know, what we have to do is, again, step up. We really got to step up. Build coalitions. Build these coalitions. My brothers and sisters in Christ and the churches and everything. Come on now. We got to step up. We can't be shy. We can't be so, so, and so forth and get so wrapped up with our ego that we don't build coalitions with communities, with brothers and sisters that are into health and wellness and go ahead and invite them into your churches and make some things happen. Because I can tell you, I had a situation where I was uh, at this uh, seminar and there were none but fellas and uh, I shared something with them. I said, on my way to that church, I came across at least a dozen convenience stores now. Now, you got to now think about this now. This is a low-income community now. When we talk about low-income, go back to the statistics and, and the theories, and we can get into a long-winded discussion of why the people are poor and, and the projects and everything else, but somehow those businesses find their way into those particular neighborhoods. And we know what kind of food and, and alcohol and Everything else you can imagine is not good for us, and it's definitely not good for the people that live in those neighborhoods. And so I went to the ministry and went to the church, and I just boarded it up. I said, well, you know, on my way here, I went across a dozen or so convenience stores. Now, way back in the day, black folks used to own them, but we know the story with crack cocaine and everything else. Other people came in, and I don't begrudge anybody for having a business, but I have to take issue with the fact that when it comes to health and wellness and the type of products and things that they serve in those businesses aren't good for our people. And so my point to them was, be a nice thing if we had farmer's markets. Be a nice thing if we had seminars, we have health fairs, and, and, and you name it, and just do it. Make it happen so people have access to the type of things that we know or the, or, or the type of, of remedies and alternatives when we talk about herbs and, and, and you name it when it comes to our health and wellness so we can, we can definitely be in a better position when it comes to treating some of those 
chronic diseases and not be shy and be bold about that. Um, there are other things that we can do as well as when it comes to building coalitions, when it comes to making sure that these neighborhoods, when they're designing these neighborhoods, that, that these neighborhoods that are going to be catered towards us are healthy. You know, they have those green spaces. They have those areas where, you know, we like to exercise. We like to work out as well. Um, so there's a long list of things that it would take me about an hour to break it down and get into. Um, but for us, we know what we got to do. When it comes to these chronic diseases, before we even get to COVID-19, when it comes to um, chronic diseases such as heart attacks and heart disease, cancer, heart attacks is just one form of a heart disease. We have other issues too when we talk about chronic heart illnesses and taking us out. And the one thing that is always zeroed in that you're related to is the food. It's the food. And we have to take charge of that. We know what we got to do, black people, whether it's the food, I can get to mental illness. We got we can't be shy about talking about mental illness because as soon as we talk about the conspiracy theories about or, or whatever that happened to us and people did to us, there's no way in the world we can be completely stable when it comes to our mental health. We know what we have to do. We know when we talk about mental health from a black perspective, we'd be just like if I was talking to women, a man and a woman, they're different. They have to have a different conversation when it comes to this. Black people, unapologetically, we have to have a different conversation. So I wanted to put this out. I'm going to have another video where I'm going to be talking to the fellas. Because fellas, we need to talk. We really need to talk about this when it comes to health and wellness. Um, so with that being said, I'm out. Take care. Again, subscribe, subscribe. It's a YouTube channel. Um, got some other stuff coming up when it comes to actual exercising. Like I say, I'm a fitness constructor, fitness consultant. Wellness consultant, you can throw that in there too. And so just leave your comments. You can subscribe, um, like button, whatever you choose to do. I'm looking forward. If you if you got some information that you want to share, I'm open to that. Uh, if you're in the realm of health and wellness, um, just feel free to post, hit me up, inbox me, or post your comments or how you feel about the conversation that we're having right now, what I just said. And with that being said, again, see you real soon. Take care. Take care. Be blessed.